Uh, you see the co-host is uh, D Parlor. Uh, we got some feedback there from somewhere. Hey, we got some feedback from you, D. Um, I don't know where I am feedbacking at. Let me see. Everything is off for me. Okay, it's better. Okay. That's better. Uh, so, yep, Howie Linux. Uh, last week we talked about uh, edge computing. Oh, I'm hearing it again. Uh, last I'm week not we hearing it on my end. I am. Uh, we talked about edge computing. We talked. We also talked about parallel computing earlier. And we also talked about the different locations where, or not different locations, the different industries where you'll find, uh, where you'll find um, Linux at uh, in terms of edge computing, IoT devices, uh even um, we should do a segment on on AI um, and machine learning because that's where a lot of the money is going for startups uh, as well as robotics. So um, this week uh, I want to do a little something different. Um, I want to show you uh, my progression over time. Is uh, up to twenty eleven and probably where. Uh, Stop it. I can tell you, I couldn't find my offer letter for my first job, but today you get a chance to look at my offer letters and, um, you know, what, what that looked like from 2008 and 2011. So 2008, 2011, I got started in 2002 uh, as an intern, and then 2000. Six, 2005, 2006, first full-time job, like, you know, after, before graduating from college, and then on from there. So you get a chance to ask those questions, you get a chance to uh, just talk, up, really talk about uh, natural progression uh, and stacking your skills, and you get a chance to see it firsthand. Uh, the only things that have been redacted from these documents are like my address, because there's personal information, uh, places that I live, so forth and so on, and uh, signatures and stuff like that. So everything else is pretty authentic, pretty straightforward. Um, do you want anything you want to add to this? And I mean, what episode is this? I didn't even say what episode is this. Oh, it's episode eight. Is eight? I thought it was It's 10. episode eight. We have the 30th episode of Tech Stocks and Jobs. I can't <laughs> believe it has been... 30 weeks. Right. I mean, my Saturdays are. Your Saturdays are not there no more? No, I don't have any Saturdays. We I do. have no Saturday. We, and I can't believe here it. With me. Hmm? You're just here with me. Um, Every day. Every day. I uh, Luckily, I like you as a person. And you are my friend. But uh, I can't believe it. it. It's episode eight of Howie Linux. We didn't have a name for like four weeks. Everybody laughed at my name. But here we are, episode eight. And we're getting it in. Um, got some new people. Hey, Brown Foxy. Thanks for joining us. Glad you caught us live. Right. Um, making sure our feedback um, is, is gone. I heard a new term last night that has me tickled called struggle stream. So I don't want us to be struggle streaming today. Hey, man, I couldn't help it. My laptop just, it, and it's charged. It just died. I mean, you weren't supposed to tell on yourself. That was a whole nother show. It just died. I'm talking about this, this show. This show, we don't want to be a struggle stream. Uh, so shout out to the lead attorney for my new term, struggle stream. Uh, what else? Uh well, uh, we did do two giveaways on the last stream. We uh, did. We're not giving away anything in this one. The, our tenth, our tenth episode, will give something away. I think that is a fair assessment. But thirty episodes. I mean, we had to give something away for thirty episodes. I mean, it continues. I mean, I, and I, and you know, I, I hope everybody takes away something uh, from these episodes and from this content. Um, you know, <clears throat> a lot of people will be charging you a, a whole hell of a lot for this content. Uh, <clears throat> and a lot of people always ask us, why do we do it? Uh, like, oh, no, I want to do that for free, this, that, and other. But 
my um thought process is this not where I make my money. I could, but this just is this is just not where I make my money. That um for this information and a lot of this information is free. Um uh oh yeah we got plenty of men in 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 our in our in our group uh if you go check out our streams uh, any of our youtube streams and interviews you see we interview men all the time uh, our stats is 30 percent men are in our group so yep and if you um come to the meetup we meet up every wednesday every other thursday from seven to nine I I I start leaving at 7:15 when nobody has showed up. So those that have been coming and, and it's 7:30, I leave at 7:15 because I mean I'm not just gonna wait for someone to come and get free content and free training. So you know, yeah, uh, that's just I I reserve my time. I'm reclaiming we my on Wednesdays. time. I'm at seven to nine. Time. <laughs> and then we have a study group on Thursdays from seven to nine every other. Thursday or depends on what the need is but and really, and really that study group is just a continuation of that first class but you can also enter that in as your class ask your questions right now we're going over to RHCSA uh, which is your uh, really your intro to Linux class then we're moving into um, doing your RHCE which is Ansible then from from which is will be your configuration management from your configuration management We'll move into uh, Terraform and Kubernetes, um, and all those are certifications, uh, certification driven. Uh, and one one reason why we're moving into Kubernetes, we'll be moving into Kubernetes from an OpenShift perspective, a Rancher perspective, and just a plain vanilla Kubernetes. You can get your CK CKAD or your CK uh, CKA, which is your or is it CKD? CKD, your Kubernetes developer, and then Kubernetes admin um, certificate. Uh, we talked about it earlier when we were looking at some of the jobs. They were interested in people having Kubernetes. They were interested in people having um, having the understanding how to deploy applications using Helm charts. Uh, what is a Docker container? How do you create a Docker container? What's a Docker file? How do you use Packer? How to use uh, how do you create your own uh, uh, CD, CI CD pipeline, GitLab, all these things are what we talk about and more in our meetups and, and and to get you started so that way you can go in um, in not at the help desk. That's my that's always been my goal. It's not to get people starting at the help desk. Nothing wrong with the help desk if that's what you're doing. I just think we just have too much. We have too too many opportunities and too much information out there for you to start at the help desk. You can bypass the help desk uh, because, right, like I said before, like I said last night, like I always say, if our wealth uh, is supposed to be uh, for a black family, uh, zero in 2053, I just want to make sure I'm doing my part so that those that are in <clears throat> and in my group or in my network are not at zero dollars in 2053. We we'll also have talked about ETFs. What well, ETFs are returning 30 to 40 percent on, on returns. We've talked about investments in real estates. We've talked about um, how to uh, set up uh, your LLCs. Uh, what does it look like to was a 401k versus a Roth 401k versus uh, an IRA? Who could you go with for that? We've talked about so much. Um, and again, these tech salaries lend you the ability to um, lend you the ability to make your money in tech and then go invest it elsewhere. So that's what we're about. So that's where we're at. So uh, I'll drop uh, hope the link for our one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, people, yeah. we're going to be adding some um, other sessions there um, as well as far as um, career pathing, we're going to add some other stuff. Um, I'll be spearheading those courses, uh, those one-on-one -on -one sessions. Here's a link. I went ahead and dropped them in the chat as well. Right now, it's if you are new to tech or are you in tech and looking for um, a little bit of guidance as far as wanting to pivot and you need some one-on-one -on -one help, you can definitely use that link. We have one-on-one -on -one sessions. We have... Um, resume review uh we have interview prep and 
There's one more. I think it's career path. And just if you want to talk and just, um, I don't want to say shoot the shit, but you know, just a, get a just little a, direction. Get, get a little direction outside of the Slack group. Um, you're more than welcome to um, book a session. Yep. So as always, let's get started. Um, if you have not been to our website, hit up womenandlinux.org. Uh, if you want to connect with us, connect with us on Slack. If you want to shop with us, of course, you know, you can hit up the shop. We gave away a hoodie this morning and a pillow. Uh, was it, is it Omega something? We gave away a pillow. I know we gave away a pillow, but who was the person? Omega something. Oh, I don't know. I forgot his name already. I have to go back. It was to something show. awesome. Yep. And here's the pillow. Uh, he won the pillow. And we and also then, uh, Sasha, she has, uh, she has, she wins all the stuff too. I'm going to start blocking her and, and <laughs> Dan Kevin from winning all the stuff, but I can't uh, help that they pay Sasha, attention. Sasha, she's trying to give you block ministry. I'm not trying to give her block ministry, but they pay attention, so I can't help that. So if they collect all of the stuff, who am I to deny them such a place? Who am I? All right. all right. And also, like we say before, like I always say, you don't have to donate with your money. You can donate with your time. Money is always always an option. Uh, but you can also um, uh, share this stream. Uh, make sure you hit the like and subscribe notification button and go back and watch some of our older content and leave comments and stuff. Uh, we're always looking for what what we may be missing when we're talking to you all or what we may be missing when we are um, just in general what may be in the industry. I try to make sure that I'm up on the latest and greatest. I've been told I'm a robot. I'm not. I am human, but I just read a lot of content and you pull things sometimes. together uh what you say you sleep sometimes i do uh and pull things together from um talking about in and our creative creating wealth channel uh let's get into that a little bit um in the creating wealth channel i posted uh, a lot of things this week um and i didn't even bring up this stuff from uh uh in terms of um uh the the ai and the robots and the government contracting but nevertheless uh as you can see in if you're in the creating wealth channel uh virtual trucking classes we talked there's that was mentioned uh logistics uh because we were looking at uh, starting a logistics company uh uh manufacturing so that that's another one um so there's the there's actually a a conference and actually people are giving um, money out for uh you know basically black people to get into manufacturing like manufacturing products and Florida is notorious for space and manufacturing uh, Alabama Georgia a uh, huge South Carolina to really the Southeast are really huge in in places for manufacturing. So just be on the lookout for what, I, what I'm posting inside of creating wealth because this again the, the the channel is created to spark ideas. Like here's a, here's the here's one that I was that I'm really interested in. Uh, VCs want to help startups uh, win 682 billion dollars in government contracting. And if you've been following anything inside of general, you've seen nothing but billions. And these government contracting is co coming through uh, almost every day. Oh, such and such. Like, no one even noticed that uh, Amazon just won $10 billion in a government contract at, outside of the, the one that they were competing with, with Microsoft, right? No one cared. You know, nobody saw that one coming. And so it's being contested as well, too. So, again, when, you, when you're looking at what's what's coming up inside of general that's let you know that's where your tax dollars are going number one and number two that lets you know who's hiring right so when you see somebody want a contract that knows that's that lets you know who's hiring but that also lets you know if you're in the government contracting space who's looking for people to partner with as well too because once they win these contracts 20 percent has to go to small businesses so now it's a way for you to get onto a contract 
and actually maybe do the work or as a person or do the work as a person under a company or as a company hire people to do the work. So there's multiple ways to look at that. Anything you want to add, Dee? I'm going to look at the comments here. Um, no, I think you hit the nail on the head with that one. Okay, cool. Let's All right. get into this. Um, I am. These uh, these offer letters. I You know, oftentimes I think people, and I don't know, it, I guess everybody always wants us to be, um, I guess, more exciting and more flashy. I think, you know, we're two laid back ladies. Um, we like quality things. Um, but however, you know, when we talk to people outside in the real world, they're like, you should sell the cars and the boats and the yachts and the things of that nature. That's just not who we are. And, um, you know, you give enough to the Internet, you give enough to the world. So your private life, I like to keep a little bit for myself. So I'm excited that um, of the topic today and we're going to go over a, a, a real offer letter to offer letters that um, Tamika has received um, in her job career. And so these are real numbers. These are real benefits. Uh, these are uh, real situations, real scenarios. So as she said before, um, some private information has been redacted. However, the meat and potatoes of this thing um, is still together. So thank you, uh, Brown Foxy. It is our fifth year anniversary. We've been celebrating all year. Uh, we have another uh, virtual happy hour, which we enjoy coming up. I don't have the date, but it's probably going to be our last one of the year. Uh, so our merchandise is our, our is limited edition merchandise. So if you haven't gotten anything, um, it's going to disappear soon as the year ends. So make sure that you grab some now. But um, let me go ahead and share this screen so you can uh, check it out. Yeah. And let me know if you all can see this. It looks big on my end, but just let, let me know. I, it looks it looks good on my end as well. All right. So 2008, this would be me moving to D.C. from San Antonio. Um, and uh, we I give you the background on how the interview went and what led up to this point. Uh, interview was uh, over the phone. It was, hey, do you, you know, can you do these things? And, you know, it, it was a list of, of information. And um, I said yes to, to that and gave a description of how I would do those things. And then it was a take-home quiz, I don't, a take-home test. And I don't even know, I may still have that take-home at home. And it was like, just, you know, you know, give us just a little blurb of X, Y, and Z. So uh, I went above and beyond on that take home. Um, and it was like, he just wanted some paragraphs, but I literally set up a, a Linux box and did things like, how do you set up an NFS server? What files would you configure? Uh, how do you how do you add users uh, in a for loop? How do you set up uh, LDAP? Um, walk me through setting up uh, the, the client for LDAP. What is Jira? How would you install Jira? How would you install um, any of the Atlassian products? And they wanted it back the next day. I asked for an extension for for two days because I worked all night on it and I gave real detailed information. And when I sent it back over, um, he the recruiter forwarded that information to my manager. Was, um, and once he for his name was Robert. Uh, once he forwarded the information to to that manager, uh, I got a call back with in the same hour, and then he was like, "The manager wants to speak to you. It was a good time to talk." So I got on the phone with him, and he was like, "I'm impressed. We're gonna hire you. You you gotta you know you gotta talk to my manager and so forth." So I ended up talking to his manager, and she she was like, "They were impressed." And then they offered me a hundred thousand um, with no relocation assistance from San Antonio, and I wasn't enthused because I was just like, I know how much money it takes to move. I just moved from I moved from Hawaii and Atlanta and and Seattle, 
to San Antonio. I know how much it takes to move. It's a minimum of ten thousand dollars to move a two bedroom apartment. It's that's at the minimum back then, right? So you can imagine what gas prices are like now and travel and so forth. So it's probably, you know, at least fifteen to twenty thousand now, if not more. So I know that it takes a minimum of ten thousand dollars to move, um, based on your weight. You could take that. People are like, oh, I would have left all that stuff there, but you would still have to move into an apartment and get all those things back anyway. So you're not really saving when you really look at it, in my opinion. Um, unless you decide that you just want a bed and a bed a bed in the a bed in a bag and a uh and a kitchen in the box <laughs> and that's what you living with. But uh yeah, uh that's not what, what I plan my, what my intentions were. Uh and then um the other one is uh, when you're when you're moving across state, you need your first and last month's rent, and um, you need to you know put your deposits down on your utilities and whatever else the case may be uh, to get moved. So that's why I say that ten thousand dollars gets eaten up really really quickly, um, and especially if you're moving into the D.C. area at the time where everything. It's a part is a minimum of fifteen hundred. Now everything is a minimum of, of twenty two hundred, twenty three hundred. Maybe you can get away with eighteen fifty, nineteen fifty. Location dependent. And when we're talking about Northern Virginia, you can give it up for the man. I've been up there twice, um, so I know what it takes to live in that area and so forth. All right. So then you you counter offer, right? You never take the first one. You counter. Didn't know that when I first started in the industry. So I always counter. Um, but it's good for you to look at the company and, and what you need and say, okay, what are your, what are your, what are your, um, what are your must haves in this offer that you got to have? Everybody always touts that they need insurance, but what if you're married to a military man or maybe your spouse has good benefits? Maybe you don't need that insurance, right? So, you know, there's things to look at. Maybe you're a veteran and you just use your, your insurance from, you know, your VA, right? So just look the nuances that you tend to look at. But we're going to get into this offer. So I kind of offer, actually, this is not the, uh, uh, like I said, it started at 100. Um, and then it came back and countered and said, hey, we'll give you 100 plus $10,000 to move. And then I was like, mm, no, mm, we're going to have to do better than that. So the offer ended up being uh, really um, 115 uh, with 10,000 to move, but I couldn't find that. Um, but nevertheless, here you go. Uh, that was see, as you can see, that was back in October of 2008. Uh, so what are we talking now? October 2008, we're in 2021. So we're talking 13 years ago, right? Is that right? Yep, 13, 13 years ago. Um, so in 2008, so if anybody ever asked you like what you were doing, how she, she's lying or whatever, you don't make that kind of money. This was in 2008, right? So, uh, with this one, this, this offers is okay. You know, um, in terms of in, you know, coming, I graduated from college in 2007. So in college in 2007, if I, um, I uh, took on a job, is this timeline right? 2000, yeah, I graduated in 2007, stayed in San Antonio for a while, and then I moved from San Antonio to, I think it, was, it had to be 2005 then. I mean, my timeline may be off. Yeah, that's the way it got. I spent some time in San Antonio, and then I moved. And then in San Antonio, I went from 55 to 90, and then from 90, no, 55 to 85, and then from, and that was as a sign-on bonus, if you hear me going back, back and forth with the numbers. I'm just th thinking base. And then from there move to dc so when i tell you to uh not take anything like when you're making your moves um here's a rule of thumb 
um, for I think it's for every for every ten thousand dollars that you lose. So say if somebody say, "Oh, you should take that job because in the long run it's going to pay you more." Um, but you have to also remember that you're probably going to get anywhere from two to five percent in a raise. So for every, I think it's for every ten thousand dollars you you lose. It takes you five years to get that ten thousand dollars back. I think that's the rule of thumb. So if you say, "Hey, I'm gonna take a job that's gonna pay me, you know, twenty thousand dollars less," it's probably gonna take you ten years to make up that twenty thousand dollars, unless you're going to take the job with the intent of not staying there long because you want to get the experience under your belt. And when you do that, you must want to make sure that when you make your next move, it is, you're going to add, and this is where it gets complicated, you're going to need to add that $20,000 that you lost onto your new move and then some, right? So that's going to, that's going to, that's, that's going to end, you know, now you're asking for a job, you're at, you're asking yourself to be put in a position where you're going to need to make $40,000 more uh when you leave because my minimum is 25 when i whenever i i move and you can do the math on uh you know making that twenty five thousand dollar bump um when you're talking about that right so that's one job offer i'm looking at the comments uh, i don't know if anybody got any questions or they're okay with how i explain this um it's just really it's really a basic you know uh you know, offer package. Nothing really fancy about it here, right? Just, you know, you get your drug test and so forth and so on, blah, 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 right? So nothing fancy about that. All right. So this is where the fancy starts. Um, this is 2011. Uh, you can see that um, that was 132, I mean, 110, 115, and then you add 25. So it met my, my, my minimum of 25,000. Uh, but the way this income, this um, actually breaks down is you get the 132,000 base, um, and this was 2011, and then you get 25% um, regardless of what i do if i never ever contribute anything to my 401k uh, the company was going to automatically put 25 percent into my 401k so annually and this increases annually because you get a pay raise annually they increase that every year and they put thirty-three thousand in there to start into my 401k every year and then you know of course you get a pay raise and stuff like that so that increases as well too right so um also in in this the way it was structured was um 33 went into there then you know you add in you maximize your money your input into your 401k and the way it worked was when it, when, when i when i first got there was um my pto was i earned um at the at the max at the max height of me being there i i earned uh 50 hours a month in time off but i could take um i could then request that instead of me having the 50 hours banking every month i could request that i get a check um and say well give me 30 hours worth of my money in addition to my check. So I could have money to go do this or money to go do that or, you know, whatever the case may be, right? So that was the what they considered profit sharing. And then you had, you could buy into the company stock. The company ended up getting um, sold to, uh, um, 63 Systems, which is uh, a subsidiary uh, of uh, CACI. You can go look up CACI. They still have these um, under six systems, not under CACI. 
under six system, which is a company under them, they do this, they do this type of packaging, uh, where they put in, uh, 25% into your 401k. Um, you get our Christmas parties. We would have Christmas parties at the Ritz Carlton and the Christmas party. When I first went to the first Christmas party, uh, we would we would get season tickets to baseball games, football games, uh, trips, uh, cruises, uh, giveaway of laptops. I got my first tablet from from the company was a, was a Samsung tablet. First time I had a tablet. Um, give away MacBook Pros, uh, gift cards to uh, um, Best Buy with a thousand dollars on the gift card. Everybody got a gift card to to Best Buy, um, just on GP, like a hundred dollar gift card. Just that was just on GP. So um, smaller company. Um, we were at the time thirty or forty people. So that's why I look at smaller companies because I think. Smaller companies give you that leverage of being the jack of all trades and also being having the ability to um, uh, learn and stack your skills. And then from there, you get to move on and do other things. So you get your, you get your hands and your fingers and everything. I see some questions here. Uh, a lot of IT work is not about what you know, but uh what you can figure out how much of the take-home test was what you knew versus what you researched it was a mix um I, some of it i knew and some of it i didn't know uh, so i was able to research it and and get together i will say this inside of just over years what i'm talking about with interviews uh sometimes you don't get the opportunity to take to take a test home sometimes you need to know the stuff on the spot. And that's really evident when you start progressing in salary, like what you're, what you're doing at, at $50,000 a year and what you're doing at $100,000 a year versus 200, 300, 400, that becomes a little different. It's not, a, it's not about, a, it, at that point, it, it's really not a take home. It's either you know it or you don't, um, and it's company dependent. And when I say company dependent, that's culture dependent. Some people have different ways of interviewing. So yeah, it, it depends on, on, on the company and, and how they're, they're setting up their interviews. Um, with this, in addition to, uh, the 25% into my 401k, um, they also, um, if you drop down here, here's my ins. This was my insurance and medical plan. Um, and then if we keep going, see, employees responsible for any cost in excess of their 25% IBA. Um, let's drop down. Is it in here? Yeah, right here. In addition to that, uh, I got offered, as you can see, uh, $10,000 for relocating expenses. And then sixteen thousand dollars for uh, my tuition and books because I was going to grad school, and it was I was in, it was I was going for free, and I had sixteen thousand dollars left of worth of classes, and I was like, well, if I'm moving, you should pay for that because it's free for me. So that's where I negotiated that into my contract. Um, and as well, like I said, the ten thousand dollars to move um, for moving down to Sarasota. So a total of twenty six thousand dollars up front. Um, plus, they also went ahead and uh, because it was such a big move, they went ahead and put money down on my apartment. So they went ahead and paid for the first and last month's rent and the move. They also paid for the move. Uh, I took the auto train down from Virginia to Florida and they paid for me to be on the auto train. So basically, you know, everything that I needed and wanted for me not to say no, like, like take away all the excuses. And then that way you don't have that problem. Um, also here, there's like an amount of a, of a thousand dollars, I mean, of a hundred hours 
uh, plus five thousand dollars can be rolled over every year. So your PTO, so like that if I earn uh, forty five hours a month, so I take forty five hours all the way up until the end of the year. All right, a, a month. And say I don't use those, that time. Maybe I, in the way we worked, it was you work, uh, you work for, you work over your time. So instead of you working eight hours a day, you work 10, 12 hours a day. So if you needed to take um, off at the end of the week or the end of two weeks, you know, do your, your 12 on, you know, you know how you do your, your time. So that way you can have, you know, in two weeks, you can have two days off or a day off or you don't come in on a Friday or something like that, whatever the case may be. And then you take um, that that money again. I can only uh, amount equals to 100 hours plus 5000. That actually comes back to me as a check. Right. So that's. um so now, instead of me not only getting my time off, my PTO paid out to me in a check, because some people would never take time off, and they would, in, at the end of the year, get a check for, I don't know, $45,000, $60,000 after taxes, easily. Um, and then from there, we um, you take that money, and you, you're already maxing out your 401k, uh, so now that money is just for you to do whatever you want to with it, right? And so that happened every year, right? Um, the other part of, of, of this job was uh, the company got bought. At one point, we were at $3,000 a share uh, when they got bought. People who had been there 10 to 13 years easily became millionaires uh, easily. Um, and we were a small company and we went from being a 30 person company to being a 300 person company. I think they may be at 500 now. Um, but those are my offer letters that I want to show you all the way up until 2011. That's been more offers, uh, after 2011, way more offers, way, way more money than that. But uh, I just wanted to give you an idea of what an offer letter could look like, how you could put one, you know, together, you know, in terms of like, what are the benefits? Uh, do you do 401k matching? Do you do this? There's some companies that there's, there's only, it's, it's only one other company that I saw that beat the 25%. They put 50% into your 401k, uh, regardless of what you got going on. They put 50% into your 401k 50 percent of your salary into your 401k um and I, I saw that company recently I, I i thought i posted it in slack I, I might have i have to look in my in my notes and see but again that's where i'm at i'm gonna look and see if some questions in there what what type of roles were these sysadmin uh roles system engineer um uh coming in taking this one i was taking care of the company's uh linux uh side and the and the data center and working on different contracts uh doing government contracting uh also as well i was at, at saic you depending on the contract and what they need um i could have got before i took this job at ltc i was actually on my way to afghanistan uh, to do work in afghanistan so I would have got, you know, plenty of money if I would have, when I would have, most people I know that at during that time, during the Afghanistan move, they never left. They stayed over there for years and have made bank. I mean, they have made bank. So, um, yeah, I know a lot of people that retired and it was just like, yeah, I'm retired and I'm touring the world. So. All right, so let's see. Do 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 do. What type of roles? Yep. Great book for interview questions to one on ones to. Yeah. Okay. Yep. At that at that point in time, were you having an attorney review contracts? Um, 
I didn't have a, a, an attorney review this one because this one's pretty straightforward. I have had attorneys review my offer letters that come with uh that come as a small book. Anytime you know I get the little small books, I'm like, yeah, it's time to have you review uh, these because you're also I didn't have to sign an NDA with this one. So in some in some cases, some companies they were like, you need to sign an NDA. Uh, you need to let us know what you're doing, blah, 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 and so forth. So um, that's when I get into uh, an actual lawyer looking things over. Because uh, there, I have my own entities outside of that company. Uh, so I need to protect those as well, too, uh, going into it. Uh, Middle East page, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, they're getting evacuated now, but um there are still other locations that pay quite well um uh, for some of this work at what point did you start your first llc that's when d comes into play uh you can hop into that uh no uh those those uh some of those jobs were civilian jobs did see? i hear my name is yeah. somebody looking for me yeah what what at what point did you first start your llc that will probably be women in Linux first, right? Nope. It was 50 50 for women in Linux. Mm -hmm. okay. And that was in your career. This is after maybe after you moved down here. Um, we were talking, and I was like, Well, what do you want to be? And she's like, My ultimate goal is a CTO. And based on my entrepreneur background, I said, I can make you a CTO tomorrow. What what are you talking about? And we went and filed um, for our for-profit company, which is 5050 Geek. So um, I did that uh, for her, and then I came on as a partner a couple of years later. But, you know, there's nothing to it but to do it. Um, and it's, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure the next question is, when do you start your own LLC? And you know the nuances of that but it's all relative you can start your llc today if you're going into government contracting or you're doing any contracting at all and you want that um those funds to be funneled through a company and not to yourself personally however there are you know nuances you have to look at as far as being a single member llc that's looking that looks like a sole proprietorship and that's a whole nother show so so it was 2013 to give them a timeline when okay. you got your first LLC. And actually it wasn't an LLC. It was um it was a full out corporation and it got converted into an LLC years later. Let's see, the one says, do companies attempt to limit the amount of positions work, meaning working for other companies? You mean like job hopping? Mm. People frown against job hopping. <laughs> I'm not going to say any names. I'm just going to say this. There was this company, and it's very well known. Um, and um, I was in a, in a at a conference, and the person was the mentor. And the person stated that we that they were looking for people to be at a company at least four or five years i said i was telling the people at the table they should stay at a company no longer than two to three years and then bounce um and she was like oh no that's not good right and um this person she had a um had a company and was like, yeah, we're not selling, we're not doing anything. I said, for the right price, you'll sell. A year and a half later, a person sold that company, went to another company, and I was, and I was, and I saw her at a conference, and I was like, what happened to you not selling? I thought you were never gonna sell. I thought you you were gonna be there for the next four or five years, and blah 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 she was like but it was my dream job it was i was like yeah i was like, and that goes back to my point about you're telling people about x y and z don't jump you look you only you 
two, three years, you can stay with a company. Great. If you can move around in the company, even better, like places like Google, Amazon, um, Netflix, they afford those things because they're big. You know, those are big companies. Your CACI, big companies. Um, GDIT, big companies. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about large companies where you can move around in, in not just in the company, but around the world, right? You get the opportunity to go to England. Uh, I was actually was supposed to be moving to England with that last company that I was talking about. And I was going to go to England for five years. Uh, why? Because now you get, uh, you get a, a different type of pay scale. Um, you get your housing taken care of. You know, so your money becomes goes into your pocket. So, you know, a lot of people just take on the challenge, especially if you're single. And it's just like, well, you know what? I'll go live in Germany for five years if you all are paying for everything, meals and housing. And all I need to do is go to work. And whatever house I have here, I can rent it out or I can sell it. And I now I'm just collecting the check. And now you're not at that $132,000 anymore. You're more at like a 180, 190. So you imagine if you're getting a paycheck every month where you're not spending nothing, you're not spending anything. You're just stacking that money and you stay there for five years and just keep stacking. Um, so, and we could do a breakdown of, 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 of that. Let me pull up a calculator here real quickly so you can see exactly what I'm talking about um, breaking this down. So if you got 180000 a year, oh, and that's the other thing. It's no taxes. That's what it was. There's no taxes on this. That's what it was. There was no taxes on this. So you got 180000 coming in. Oh, Mr. Mazira. So you got 180000 coming in. You divide that by 12. So you're pulling in uh, 15000 a month. Right, and so just let's just do 180 times, and it's actually more than 180. I'm just using this as a scenario, um, and multiply that by uh, five years tax free. That's what you're looking at in five years tax free. Um, so when I tell you some of these companies and some jobs and stuff like that, you you don't know what the perks are. You need to ask questions and so forth. So that's just an idea, right? And I, I, and again, I know some people who've been over in some of these locations in 180s. They wouldn't even do it for 180. I'll just say that, right? Um, but again, I'm not trying to fluff you or anything of that nature. I'm just giving you facts and people can take this however they want to whatever but that's that's the that's my world that i see and that i come from when i when i moved down to florida and had to go work in locations in sarasota um i i remember driving up i had a ford explorer and i drove into the parking lot and i passed Mercedes, Maserati, Porsche, 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 Bolt, RV, Camper, uh, uh, three wheelers. Uh, all that's what I passed. That's what I saw. And so when I, you know, when I got in there, I started talking to people and stuff like that. What do you do? You know. Oh, on the weekends, we have a farm and I teach people um, how to not ride on horses, but how to be the actual clown in the rodeos. Uh, we have a farm. We go out boating. Um, I, we're building planes. Yeah, I just got my plane kit and we're getting together. And we're building planes. Oh, we're going sailing. Um, oh, yeah, we're going to our vacation home in Colorado, or we're going over to, uh, when I got there, I had just missed the company picnic where everybody, including the kids and the, and the spouses were, uh, they did a, a, a company plus 
a trip down to Captiva Island, rented out a yacht, um, rented out, uh, uh, paid for all of the, all of the, all of the hotels, the, the hotel to stay at, um, on, on, on the, you know, on, in, at the Marriott, um, and wherever they want really to stay. I think they picked two hotels where they could stay at, and then they just did their company thing. And that's what they did. So when I talk about these small companies, that's what I, that's what I see. That's what I'm talking about. Um, let me see. Um, uh, have I had to deal with non-compete? Yep. 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 Yep, 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 yeah. So the t- the non compete stuff, uh, they would, and this is coming from the owner of the company that I worked with, and other owners of companies. Those non competes don't really stand up in court because you have to survive and you have to eat. Um, I give you a prime example. Uh, I could go work on another government contract as long as is not it as long as the company that i'm going to work for is not working on the same contract i can go work for a competitor as long as they're not working on the same contract because then there'll be a conflict of interest right so those little nuances like that but you could take that non-compete and read through it have your lawyers read through it and then if you have to go to court you go to court but most of them don't even take you to court the only big times that you see stuff like that is the one that happened with Amazon where the guy quit and he started working for another competitor, but they end up overturning that as well too, right? Uh, so those are the little things, the nuances that you should be looking at. Um, let me see. What's going on, Michael Jenkins? How you doing? That's why I got into the IT years ago, but I had to take care of my mother. I got you. Uh Natasha, would you say? Oh yeah, goals. Yep, yep, yep. What's what you said something that's not right. I'm not sure about what you're talking about there. Is the government the biggest employer of private entities? I'm not sure what you mean. Um are you are you asking that um the the budgets that the government have, um, do they employ uh private companies? And I'm assuming you're talking about your GDITs, your Boeings, your here we're looking at six systems and so forth, and and so I, I, I'm I'm assuming that's what you're asking about. Um, but again, uh, we're talking about government contracting, employing a lot of different things, even at the city and the state level. Uh, when we're talking about employments, um, when I say employments, I should say the needs that the cities and the states needs like like i was looking at i was looking at um tampa and st pete and atlanta and i was looking at what services they would like for people to to come to them for like hey i need someone that can do lawn care like they need someone that can do lawn care or they need someone that can uh come secure a building or they need someone that can come clean pools, like the city pools and stuff like that. So you go in and you promote your business, your services to them. So these are the services that they're looking for. But at the same token, you are working uh, on your, you know, in your IT space in some of these cities and states and even federal, they need your IT services. So you can look at yourself as, a, as an entity and that would be considered private, but that's I'm assuming that's the that's what I got from that question. Oh yeah, it's not right that they restrict you uh like that. Oh yeah, that's absolutely that's I'm sure that's what you're referring to. Yeah, yeah. Um but I want to show you this company, uh Six Systems. This is the company that bought my company, which was L3, um, in 2013. And they expect um, 2013 revenue is expected to be the 470 million. That was the revenue. Um, it really wasn't um, really disclosed how much uh, they bought them for. But if we're thinking 10x, right? Uh, if the revenue was 470 million, you can 10x that number there. You can 10x that number right there. 
and they'll probably give you the idea and the range of which that company was purchased at. Um, and again, I am only showing you this from the perspective of if you create a company and you're providing services, you could get bought out or you could build a company and uh, somebody, uh, you know, consume you or what have you, or you keep it, what have you. And then the other flip side is you yourself are a commodity and you are the, you are the, the person that's going in and making these, uh, solving these, these problems. So that, that, that particular, uh, 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 you know, that 180 that we were talking about is, is actually pennies. Um, in the grand scheme of things, it really is uh, because you have to think like this. A lot of these government contracting uh, companies win contracts and then they offer you salaries between 145 to 250 give or take. And if they are offering you that salary you have to think what their overhead and take home is from that because you're going to be around anywhere from the length of the contract anywhere from three to five years depending on the contract so they have to include your your step up your pay your next increase in pay included in that and then these the other benefit is this when you are uh, going to these companies and they, by default, it's uh, $5,280 $5, that they offer you in uh, educational credit. That's just the standard by, by federal. That's just the, the men right there. So it will behoove you to negotiate up front your educational needs so if you wanted to have a if you want to go to a conference or if you want to go to um uh, uh, uh a conference or if you want to go if you want to negotiate plural site or something like that uh for a year or two years or you want to negotiate going to uh the the black hat conference with all its spits pay hotel all that stuff it would behoove you to do that up front and not use your educational credit to do that right because now you got that in your offer letter so that's taken care of and now you can use your educational credit to do something else yeah yeah like you're saying even negotiate your sans courts up front right negotiate negotiate that up front uh the other piece is um, when it comes down to negotiating, uh, not just for money, but for education, like I say, or like I said earlier, I've seen people negotiate cars and houses and student tuition. And well, you saw mine, I had, I showed you mine, my tuition was, was paid for, uh, for my master's degree. That was for my master's, um, and, and, and my move and my car uh, being shipped down and so forth. So all of those things can be negotiated. But here's the here's the trick. It's it's, it's real simple. You gotta open your mouth and ask. That's it. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> you gotta open your mouth and ask. I'm not. No, nobody's never gonna give you nothing. You keep your mouth closed, right? Um, so that's the trick. Uh, open your mouth and ask. You know again so when you're looking at companies know what your what is your what's your what's your ask what's your men and i tell you to write it down and what's your mask like what is the things that you need to have and you need to make sure that you go down that that thing and for those of you that um, are just late to the stream i just went over uh um i just went over uh two job offers that i had um from 2008 and 2011 i broke down how that though that company was structured um for 2011 um and how that uh that the money that was a i was able to make out of that um 
I'm gonna stop talking and read comments now and 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 let D come back in uh to the stream. Um, I wanted to go ahead and review a few questions that um were just skipped over, not on purpose, but I want to um maybe get them addressed. Um, Sasha had a few good questions, and I, I think um, you might have um, reviewed this one at one point in time. Do you have an attorney attorney review your contract? You did say that um, uh, it it depends. That particular contract was straightforward. Forward. However, there are some contracts that get a little tricky. And um, especially um, as or Grog said, when it comes to those non-compete agreements and it's just it, non-compete agreements and your intellectual property, when you get into that space, you definitely want to have an attorney review or um, hit the Google. It knows all things. Uh, me and Tam, we crack up all the time because we call them lawyering words. Uh, lawyering words are very different than standard English and something that you might think is uh, is true is not true. So make sure that you protect your um, IP, your intellectual property, because it is yours. And if you are working on projects prior to your employment, um, you should be able to provide an, a, a, an exhibited addendum at that time and get those things addressed because that might make or break that particular job for you. It's just, it might be a no-go. Um, there's another question that said, do you need um, a, do you need a security clearance for those Afghan jobs? 99.9, if you're working as a government contract, you're going to need to be a cleared employee. That's no, all. Hold Go on. ahead. But so, I, I'm not finished. <laughs> I'm not finished. You, um, But also there are companies, and I know people personally that were working in Afghan as lay people. And they didn't need to be cleared and they were over there and they were contracting and they were making bank. Yes. Yeah, so you can be a civilian um, and go over mm -hmm. as well. Um, but again, you know, you're going into a war zone. So, so you get paid a little more uh, <laughs> <laughs> to hear the bombs go off outside. Uh, but again, I, like I said, I know people that were, you know, there and they made plenty of bank. As yeah, as civilians. Yeah. Um, also... Sasha asked another question. What about building your financial team? And your question above that was um, in regards to um, starting your first LLC. So I'm going to approach this question from that standpoint. As you grow as an entity, again, I said there's a you as a sole proprietor and then you as an LLC and a single member or a partnership. Say you have other people or you put your husband on there for tax purposes, whole other show. However, your financial team grows as you grow. Right now, you might be going to H&R Block, and H&R Block may be suiting your needs for your small business. But as you grow, you might want to um, bring in, a, you might have different questions that that particular provider cannot answer. So you might go to a CPA that um specializes in government contracting or tech companies or whatever you need. It might be a CPA company. It might be one person, um, an attorney, um, the same way. I don't see them as a financial, but, you know, they do mergers and acquisitions and things of that nature. So, you know, again, they you need them for the lawyer words um, as well, but also things that just make sense for you when you if you can count and you can do dollars and cents and you can add you got a calculator you know what makes sense and doesn't make sense if it and i always go from my gut if i'm reading something and it's just iffy i go and research it and find out what's going on because there's stuff it's all if it's it's always stuff hidden in those lawyer words that you might not know of um let's see if there's anything else um, I think we are caught up on um, the questions. Is there some coming in at the end? Oh, here. Yeah, I got some at the end. Uh, no names. Have you heard of companies that offer training for software engineering or DevOps, but you have to agree to work with them the two to three 
I'm assuming that's years anywhere in the U.S. below 10, 100K for software engineers, scam or go for it. <laughs> that's 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 loaded. It's not loaded. It's, me, uh, it's, it's it's a little low. It's a lot in there because, you know, shoot, I work for a company and I'm just like, you know, they sometimes it's scammy to me. And but that's because my country, my company is based in another country. And so I am basically an immigrant. <laughs> yeah, so, for another so, company. so it depends. This is a here's how I look at this. If you don't have any skills and you're like, oh, I need to get my skills, then you can go that route and, you know, work that work with that company. Or you can sign up for a apprentice program with like a Home Depot. Yale has an apprentice program. Uh, other places have apprentice program and then roll into some jobs, you know, roll into DevOps that way. Or you can take, I think it'll probably take you six months um, to really, I mean, this is hardcore, like, you know, you're not sleeping, you up, this all you're doing. And we don't on. recommend that. We don't, and, we don't recommend uh, that. But and, uh, Hold on, hold on, hold on. I recommend it if you are disciplined enough. People need you to know. sleep. Hey. I'm not talking about people not sleeping. You said you, you the one. You the one need to sleep. If if you need, you, you, it's a it's a proven fact. It's scientific that you need to regenerate. You're interrupting me. All right. All if you, yeah, stop. So if you want to, that's what I think. Um, okay. If you want to do the DevOps courses like from a plural site or um, find you a study partner, you can do that. However, you have to remember you're not going to have any on the job experience uh, as you're doing this. So going the other route uh, is one of those things. It's one of those things. You know, so I, I say it's person dependent. I don't know the company. Do the research on the company. Um, look and see. You know, you know. Again, DevOps jobs right now, like I said before, are paying one fifty, um, one forty seven to be exact, across the United States, and that's not for. That's not a senior job. That's that that's that's that was just an that was a median average salary that um that I had found. I posted that link too. So you do need some some skills when it comes to that. You know, you can't go in and say, well, all I know is Linux. No, you're gonna need to know you're gonna need to know configuration management, infrastructure as code, you're gonna need to know some fundamentals, understanding security understanding some basics like you're just going to need to know those things i just i just want you to be aware of that is it is it if you got if you already if you're already in the game and you're already working for a company and you're doing devops i think that would that would set you back that's what i think but if you're looking to transition from say uh you've been a technical writer and you want to get into it uh that 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 might be okay i just think there are other ways to do it and those other ways to me or are, are, are taking a a course uh from uh the linux foundation or Pluralsight or something like that training yourself up and then putting yourself out there first to see if you could get a job in devops after you've taken some training courses and some certifications and then move over. If that doesn't work, then try try that route. But bet on yourself first. It's my it's my it's my thing. That's just me. I'm a bet on yourself person, bet on yourself first person. Um and not because I believe really like, oh, you got it out of the mud or you're pulling yourself up by the bootstraps. It's just I, you know, I just 
I'm gonna bet on myself first before I, I dive into somebody else's stuff. That's just me. Uh I do sleep. We're not going to debate that, um, Michael Jenkins. We're not going to worry about you and your comment, nor D. You know, we're not going to worry about y'all. Uh, <laughs> I saw a company offering 40K to 50K for DevOps on the job training. Nah, nah, not feeling that. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mike, I was saying she's an avid cat napper. She does have a block of time that she does sleep, but it is uh, if it's interrupted in any way, it's back to the cat nap. Yeah, I do sleep. Right. Um, and last but not least, on the screen, what I have here is um, some companies offer stock options and some companies offer, I uh, posted this in the chat, RSUs. Uh, you can take a look at this so you can get, there's plenty of videos on YouTube. I just want you to have this reference from a, this is just me just looking it up and this is what I found for Charles Schwab. But they break, break, they break down RSUs and the vesting schedule and what the taxation looks like um, and so forth. So just want you to have this information when you're looking at this because this comes up um, in certain jobs, especially if you're looking at an, an Amazon or Google. I don't know if Netflix offer this, but probably most of the fame probably do offer RSUs. And the startups offer RSUs as well too. So what does that look like? What is that, what is that worth? What does that mean? Please seek a CPA. Please get a CPA when you're looking at these jobs, when you start talking about uh, your RSUs. What does that look like? What are your tax advantages that you need to have? Um, how you can take this money that you make and then go and invest it into uh, uh, real estate. If you did not see the clip, I posted this in Creating Wealth in the channel where the young man makes $515,000 a year in California, but and he graduated from Berkeley. But I mean, you know, his family and them, they work and they, they set each other up. However, he's able to take his RSUs, his money and stuff like that and use it to buy real estate and look at how he uh, put things together. So I just want you to be aware of, hey, you're making this money in tech, but don't take that money and go throw it into a savings account. They don't make you no money, right? Go take that money and put it into something that's going to make money. At least if you put, even if you get a cap rate of 6% on a real estate uh, deal, at least it's making 6%, but you really want to make a minimum of 10%. You always want to be, beat the S&P 500. Every year you want to beat the S&P 500. Been performing anywhere from 8 to 10% every year. 10% is what you always want to beat. So that's why I always show you ETFs that are at least returning a minimum of 10%, a minimum of 30% on your on your on your return, 40% on your return. So you can make your money in tech and then go invest it somewhere else. Don't cash out of your RSUs or turn them in unless you're gonna pay off some student loans or something like that. That makes sense. But don't go cash out and then go buy a car. I would do that, but don't go buy a car and not have it make any money or what have you, unless you need it. Like you just want to have your money making money for you, right? Um, and that's just it. So look at the RSUs, look at what that, what that, what that, what that looks like. Be prepared. Get a CPA. Get a lawyer if these, uh, if these, um, per, um, uh. If your job, not your job description, but your job offers are are huge. Understand um, you know, what your short term and long term benefits are. Uh, also, uh, inside your insurance, you know, know what you, if you can go get a uh, you know a massage, or do you are you set up to go get uh, some some you know some type of uh, Cry chiropractor or getting your feet rubbed or something like that it may be included. You need to ask those questions. You need to find out what you what you have the ability to do and and build and not the ability to do and who they have. A lot of companies have partnerships with the Microsofts, the Apples, and stuff like that. So you can go get a discounted uh, a discounted uh, cell phone or a discount on your on your laptop or what have you. 
So, you know, utilize all of the things that have been established and ask questions. Don't sit there and be like, I hope someone tell me. Go, when you log in on the VPN or when you get to the website, go and peruse all of the websites. Go hit all, everything. Just go look. You'll Don't be amazed that. what your company yep. has as far as resources for you. I mean, uh, my company loans money. They'll buy you a car. It, it, it re they'll reimburse for that car. They will front you money for your move. Um, also, you know, your EAE, EAP programs, um, the employee assistant programs. I mean, look into it. Make sure that you read that. Like when you go in there for your training, like I say all the time, take an hour a day, research that stuff, dig in deep and use all of those benefits that are afforded to you. Yep. And I think on our YouTube channel, we had how to negotiate um, a job. Um, is it in a playlist? Yeah. It's it's in the it's in the meetups. Um, it's in the meetups. But we also have a breakdown of the RSUs and the stock options and things of that nature. That's in the job channel in Slack as well. I found a great um article. It was kind of like a guidebook to that stuff because a lot of times, um, I know for me, we get offered common stock. And then the company, it gets diluted and then the company gets sold. And, you know, there's terms in there where you get bought out and you think you're going to hit a lick and you just like, they're like, no, you're going to get these shares at what you pay, what they're worth right now. And we're going to cash you out and keep it moving. You get nothing. So it was a, it was a learning experience, but the information is definitely in Slack. Um, this is another one I wanted to bring up to um what is a co-op i would check this out because you may not want you and a group of people may want to get together and provide services but you may not want to be um a traditional company you may want to be a, a co-op and so you could check it, that out watson is the person that led this particular training on what on, on doing a co-op so let's see co-op and he's in Slack as well, and yeah. he's uh, he's available to answer questions if you guys have any questions after you look at the video. It's very informative, and most of the people know co-ops as being, as you just see on, on the screen, as, you know, food stores, mostly like health food, community stores. Also, um, apartments are co-ops. Uh, they have them really big on the coast in New York, San Francisco. My mom happens to stay in a co-op, um, and... Do a little research on that one because yeah. I, I, I like the community. Um, so here's their, their model of a co-op. Here's Volk's website. There's Watson. Uh, actually, that's a smile. That's interesting. I, isn't er, everybody has a smile? Yeah. Taylor even has one under his beard. I'm a I'm a joke with them. I'm like, what is this foolishness here? They call That's him Watson. totally off guard. It Watson, here's Taylor, uh, uh, Josh, you know Denver. Uh, we, we know we know these folks, so it's, uh, just check them out. Check out uh, what a co-op is uh, and how it's formed and so forth. Really look at that. And it, it may bore you a little bit, but that's okay. It's a great group and a great model, especially if you have yeah. if you don't have anything in your area or you have a group of friends that you want to work with and you all bring something um, different to the table and want to start working together. It's definitely, you know, one of those um, business entities that you might explore. If I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken, he said it's it's basically like a joint partnership deal and it, it kind of runs like um, a law firm. Right. Uh, this one, this one is security right here. It was it Quinescence, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, she is now, I want to say, the CTO for the state of, state of uh, New York. Yeah, give me the lane. I'm not, not I, I am not sure, but she's probably pretty up there. Yeah, let me look. I'll give you that in a minute. 
Let's see. Oh, she's uh, making security also AW. Okay, she's she's over at Amazon now. She was at, at the state of New York. So here she is right here. And I think she does some stuff on the side as well, too. Yeah, see, she was at the city, uh, city uh, University of New York. Okay, hold on. Let me see if she got a background here. Uh, a jump professor at New York University. Um, she's on the security technical program manager. Uh, the, here it is, the deputy CISO and head of threat management for the city of New York. She just left there in May of 2021. So uh, we check her out. Check out her video um, on on that we really good video, and also check out um, what she's doing. All right, she she's also teaching as well too. So just want you all to, to have that information on uh, negotiating, uh, forming companies, uh, setting up your IRAs, uh, what the money could look like. Uh, for those that, like I say, that missed the beginning of the video, I, I showed two job offers up to 2011. I haven't shown anything since, you know, since 2011. I, I mean, put something together then. All right. So I just wanted you to have that information. Um, also, um, if you like what you hear, don't get the notification. Hit the notification. Like, subscribe. Share our content with other people. Um Someone asked earlier, a man welcome. Absolutely. Michael Jenkins is another person. Uh, in fact, let me shout you out while you're on here, Mr. Jenkins, if you're still on. If you all are ever listen, interested in learning Jenkins, uh, yeah. how do I do your stuff? Um, see, learning, huh, you may drop the link. Uh, learning Jenkins uh, at, uh, it's, uh, on, on LinkedIn. Uh, he created a course. Um, so you got a course content creator here uh, with Learning Jenkins online from Mr. Jenkins himself. Right here. This, this is an older one. I think you came out with a new one uh, now. All right. So uh, you have a celebrity in the house. Um, and he's my go-to guy whenever I'm, I, I, I want to, um, you know, get some 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 jq questions when i'm trying to figure out how to script something or chop something up uh mike mike is my go-to uh he's gonna drop the link for his stuff uh very good guy uh we've done plenty of work together in fact we're getting ready to do some more work together for for bitcoin coming up uh for 2021 well, we'll be talking about just d these very same things, court, creating course content. Well, not creating course content, but just really uh, um, your presence, your social media presence on online. And, and that could be looked at as course content as well, too. Um, but again, if you want to learn Jenkins, go to, <laughs> go to Mr. Jenkins himself uh, out on uh, LinkedIn uh, and check him out. Uh, he's another one that uh, created uh, uh, content, and he's another good resource who's in Women in Linux Slack as well, too. He's been on many of uh, 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 conversations. I mean, if you're in, in BIT, we talk every day over in BIT, so it's not, you know, it's not like, you know, and we've been in conferences to, uh, in conferences together in Amsterdam. Um, so we've been around the world to, to conferences from Amsterdam to uh, see Ozcon. You pick a city, we, we, you know, we're like, Hey, who going, who going to do X, Y, and Z let's team up. And this is, this is part of the network that we're talking about when it comes to women in Linux and part of the network that you need to establish going to these tech conferences I, like i say all the time like i tell you there are people knocking and ready to hire you right there on the spot you just got to make yourself available you got to make yourself there i know right i miss the little international conferences i miss going to the to to amsterdam tell you about my amsterdam story real quick uh d didn't go to this one so uh, we were, I went to, I spoke at uh, Hashi, HashiConf in Amsterdam. We flew over uh, for, for that, but then 
they, you know, as a speaker uh, for the conference, you know, they have the speak, we have what we call speaker dinners, right? Where the speakers all get together, like a speaker meet and greet. Um, so what happens, what's behind the scenes that happens first? Behind the scenes, what happens first is usually nine times out of 10, if you're speaking at the conference, especially if you are a keynote speaker, um, your airfare, your hotel is usually paid for. It's usually the length of the conference, right? So if you want to come a couple of days early, you have to pay for that yourself. But I mean, the airfare coming early and whatnot, whatever, right? So um, I went early. So me and Dee went early so we could just you know, cruise around the city, what's going on. It's Amsterdam. We're going to the red light district. We're partying. Let's, you know, let's, let's, let's get, let's get, let's get cracking. So then um, from, from there, we had a speaker's dinner and the speaker's dinner was, uh, you know, at this one little spot and um, you walk in, they take your bags um, they, here's a hot towel, clean your hands, do, do, do. This is for the pandemic. Um, and then you get to sit down and have your, you know, a little, because it was evening time, you get to have your little drinks and your little hors d'oeuvres and little, you know, your little, little, little food or whatnot, and you mix and mingle and so forth. So they have this, at this, at this at this event space where all they do is just, you know, they just have an open kitchen where they create the food and so forth. So we go in and uh D, were you at that car? Were you there? Yes. Oh, I don't know you why. You put me in there. and out the story, but I was there. You was there. I don't know why I thought you wasn't there. Because there you went, you went, you went twice. And the second time I went, and that's where we had all of the yeah, so yeah. all the all the food, you know, they make your your food. They make, uh, you know, they make they had uh, they, they catered right. So they brought food around. It was just one of it's a nice event, right? That was Amsterdam. No, um, I wasn't at that dinner though. Okay, you weren't at that dinner. Okay, no. okay, all right, all right. I was like, you was there. I don't think he was there. Uh, but you know they had. I think it was a, was it around? It was around your birth. Was that one around your birthday? I don't remember. I thought uh, France. Car. I thought France was around my birthday. All these conferences could be actually kind of rubbed so, rub together. But France was around your birth. CubeCon was around your birthday. CubeCon was around my birthday. Um, so we, you know, we've been able to. That was in Seattle one year. We've been able to go to, and these are all conferences that we've been able to go to and have someone else, you know, take care of that. Um, Vancouver, Toronto, uh, Lyon, France, spent some time in Paris, uh, LA, Seattle, um Miami the one conference that I I wanted to go on and they still do this conference I hope it comes back now Michael Jenkins has been able to go to the conference uh in was it India I think that's where you uh that's what I think that's where you went you went to India uh but there is a conference where they do a cruise um and they do a cruise like uh, it's it's a more like a developer DevOps cruise, and then they'll have one for cybersecurity as well too. Hungry, you went to Hungry. All right, so they'll have a developer uh, cruise, and they have a cybersecurity cruise where you where the, where 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 the conference is on the cruise ship, but you hit different ports. So you know all that day while you're out at sea, you're doing the conference thing, this that and other, and then you hit a port. And so they may do like the West Indies. They may do like one of the ones I saw was in Greece. Another one um, that I've seen, um, you know, just different conferences. They'll just do like a, they'll do something off of uh, like 
from here to uh well from miami to uh you know some island or something like that or they'll do something around puerto rico or something like that so just uh yeah craft con that was the one for hungry yeah let me look that one up but these are just different conferences and and perks that you can get so why am i telling you all this because you're like yeah that's nice um i'm telling you this because this is how you can you can network um and and i say this from a perspective of network yourself into a job network yourself into working with a company network with yourself network yourself into uh being um maybe the third person at a at, at, at a startup it depends on your how you stack your skill sets and how you sell yourself so that's what i mean about networking uh i've told you before a lot of companies a, a lot of recruiters come to the um come to these conferences so it behooves you to give a talk and that's a whole nother show uh and we should yeah, have my i was here. thinking sasha don't be jelly because <laughs> that there's grants and scholarships to get you to these places and there's opportunities yep. to speak as T tamika touched on at these conference whether it's a five minute ignite talk or if you are moderating a room and you know and you can get a travel grant to go to these conferences so when tam says apply to everything uh we mean apply to everything because that's how we get to go and they are looking for people to go they have these scholarships for um women for what do they call them i don't want to call i hate the the term for it uh dis not disenfranchised but what did what do they call a group of people where we just downtrodden women i don't know, I don't know. we're gonna skip right yeah, over that but they have scholarships for people to go and to go to conferences especially for new people so Make sure you fill out, go to our, the scholarship channel, the conference channel in Slack. And I put, post that stuff um, all the time. When you see a CFP, read through it and um, see what they're talking about. Underrepresented. Thank you. They call it something else, though, Mike. They call it something else. Um, and fill it out and yeah. see what you can get. And I'm gonna end on this last one. Check out papercall.io for CFPs call for proposals. CFPs call for proposals. This is just just one, but I tried to post them inside our Slack um, in com in the conferences uh, channel uh, for you to do it. And uh, I I'll just be honest uh, when it comes to these diversity scholarships, we don't fill those things out. I'm just gonna be honest you don't know how many times people hit me up like hey can you advertise this to women in linux can you get at least three people over here to fill out the scholarship you know we just need for them to fill it out and they're not saying hey just fill it out because we just need the numbers they're saying hey fill it out because you're going to get it and we don't do it so we don't go to the conference and so we're not represented at the conference and you miss out on opportunities to network while you're at the conference. Your voice needs to be heard because when you see those algorithms acting shady and all that other type of stuff, that's because you're not there. You're not there to um, lend your voice. And speaking of voices, I know Tam wants to end on this note, but I definitely, if you want to, um, Tam, you're sharing your screen. Can you go to the website, um, to YouTube, and to our podcast? Um, what you can do for us, and I'm going to have this as is make sure that you go back and if you haven't looked at our podcast the cto series or um just our regular women in linux podcast those episodes are golden you hear directly from the horse's mouth whether it's leadership cybersecurity, a lot of questions that you may have about getting into the industry. Each person gives you that perspective. And that's how each podcast is broken down. They come in, they give you some background about themselves, how they got into tech, what they're doing now. And they drop so many gems about books that you could read, um, organizations that they belong to, 
um, what you can do to position yourself to prosper in tech. Um, if you haven't want to go listen to that, subscribe to that channel. And if you just in your day, listen to that. I mean, we need the views for, uh, for for women in Linux. So if you're gonna donate, donate a little bit of time to listening to those podcasts. I'm I swear they will be such a treat. And um it's about 20 to 30 in there. Um and then we have the CTO series and these are um chief secure uh technical officers and they're basically telling you the same thing and go listen to them. I, I swear you will not be disappointed. So two things, and then I'm going to end it. Uh, I want the, those that are interested in big data and wanted to know about transitioning into tech. If you check out Lynn uh, Langett, um, she actually uh, really got started, I want to say back up in tech at 55. And that's what this podcast actually talks about. Uh, what, what her, what her, um, what her, what, I guess not her mission, but what her path was and how she got started and where, and where she sees herself. And you can check out Lynn Langett now on, on on LinkedIn and all over. Like, she's all over the place. Um, you just pop her name here. Cloud Architect Who Codes. Started college at 15. Had a degree in German and Language and Linguistics. She's, that's Lynn right there. Um see independent cloud architect in 2011 she traveled blah 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 uh learning and volunteering and she's just this, this is her stuff is her I, I like i love to hear about people's evolution moment yep. their their evolution and then their aha moments in tech because we put so much pressure on ourselves to be and do and, and, and have all these things. And once you listen to some of these stories and, and the backgrounds and the ages of, of people, you're like, oh, my God, why am I beating myself up so hard? So definitely a treat. I dropped the link. It is, if you don't know already, our YouTube is uh, youtube.com forward slash women in Linux. That is all our social is um, at Women in Linux. We try to keep it pretty simple over here. Oh, and then this is what I wanted to end on. All right, we did the, you know, the podcast. You heard about the conferences. Uh, make sure you sign up for those those ones that are posted in, in the scholarship channel. Uh, but I also, uh, also want to, to point out um, uh, things like, uh, when you are in Sasha, you we, we went over this the other day, you know, searching these jobs, create a mind map, right? And 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 so that you could uh so you can visually see what what is required of you, right? You read it, but visually seeing it is two different things. Um, you know, I just want you to be, you know, mindful of of that. Um, and last but not least, um, bet on you, right? Bet on you. Uh, you, you are going to be your hardest critic. You are going to be your worst enemy. You are going to be the pull up and, de and the destroyer of you. I mean, it's just going to be honest. Um, but also you don't have to go at this alone. Um, you can go in it with it with the community mindset. That's why we created the community. That's why we're here. We want you to build. I, I'm, I'm always gonna say it. It build your make your money in tech and invest it somewhere else. Um, whether it's real estate, REITs, ETFs, uh, cryptocurrency, uh, eToro. Uh, you go invest into. Uh, Hey, cold storage, you want to invest into cold storage or something like that. Just make your money, make make money, and at least have a, a rate of return of 10% and more, um, minimum. Um, so that's that's my gems for the day. I hope it helped you. Uh, you got to see two offers that I had. No, you know, as y'all say, no cap, but just really you got to see it, see it for yourself 
for from my own journey um, and as well as you got a chance to see how the offers were structured, what those companies were. We went over the numbers, you know, like going to Afghanistan and whatnot. So, you know, hey, I just want y'all to win. <laughs> and we have employers that are, are are always asking. So, you know, can we pull anybody from your group? They're always looking for people. So there's jobs out there. It's just, you know, you got to put the work in, you got to put the time in, the energy and the effort. And I know, you know, especially our group is geared towards women and we're really, really, really critical of ourselves. But you're not going to get 20 years worth of experience in two months. You're going to get a great overview, but know how these things connect, you know. And so you can't be expect to be D or Tamika in two months for Michael Jenkins. Like, it's just, it's unrealistic. But counter wins is yeah. one, this 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 journey is a marathon. So counter wins, baby. Counter wins. <laughs> <laughs> My bird, man. Counter wins, baby. Your wins, but but really, um, if, if you all got any questions, you can hit us in Slack, you can email us. I know I got two emails to respond to. Oh, I think I got, I was supposed to meet somebody today. Wanna, uh, they are coming up so as soon as we hit off the, the podcast, you have a it's a one on one session that we got one on ones on Saturday. So when we go yeah. over, it's cutting me in, so it's perfect timing for her. <laughs> I was like, uh, I think I got a one. So got a one on one at four o'clock, so I can't stay on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, twenty years and counting. Um, hey man, at the end of the day, when you look at when you look at this at at this tech journey, I talked about this before. I say, why not you have a Discord app? Because I just hadn't created one. I we mean, got Slack. That's <laughs> we have a slack. I could create, slack I could create one. Um, if I create a Discord, I'm telling you this now, we're charging. So <laughs> if say I create, that again for the people way in the back. I need to hear I create, I if I create a Discord, yeah, I'll charge it. Um, but again, um and and really there's so much content that I'm 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 bringing um you that Y'all have no clue what, you know, who we're bringing on and what's about to happen. Like, get your pen and paper ready. Uh, if you're not applying to jobs that we posted in Slack, shame on you. If you're not talking to the recruiters that are in Slack, shame on you. If you don't have your resume together, shame on you. So, you know, hey, um, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I tossed it around a couple of times because... I have um, so many people that are looking for y'all. Um, I, 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 I have to like really filter. I, I do, I, I do a good job of filtering people out. But there are people who are like, yo, we got, we need, we need fifteen people this week um, to work on this project. Um, and we're paying them anywhere from 150 to 160 to work, and they need to be able to start ASAP, right? And the jobs may be you need no JS, the jobs may be cybersecurity, the jobs may be you need to do technical writing, um, it could be anything. And you know, I, I, I do, I try to have people come on 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 the live like come on the live and and broadcast that you know you don't have to wait for me you come on the live and broadcast that uh what i would like to do is start doing uh more interview sessions um with with everyone like i want the interviews to be hard i want you to i want you to feel the pressure but i also want you to succeed so little stuff like that so you know I don't know. I thought about it. I don't know. 25. I don't know. I don't know. What I think about it. Um, but it'll be a value. It won't be like you're getting it. This is a value, but it'll be 
way more in detail, one-on-one -on -one personal questions and so forth so, that I've been looking at. All right. Well, I have to run because I do have somebody waiting on me. Um, Thank yeah, you all for joining us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Brown Foxy, uh, the well, we post the stuff, the scholarships to, for people to go get free training in 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 big in in data and data analytics, big data and data analytics. Uh, we bring, I'm actually bringing some people on to talk about their journey and who's hiring. Uh, I, we get all that stuff all the time. I don't have time to go into it a little bit more, but I'm gonna see y'all in in Slack. I catch y'all next week at 11.30 for Tech Stocks and Jobs. Check, catch you next Saturday at 2 o'clock for How We Linux. We'll catch you Wednesday for uh, the meetup to go over the basic of Linux and getting your RHCSA, that journey. They're moving to RHCE. Uh, we, meet, we won't meet this Thursday. We'll meet just this Wednesday. And next week, we'll meet Wednesday and Thursday. If you don't, if you're not making any money that you, that that you want to make right now in in tech, let's go. Let's try to fix that, and I'll catch y'all next week. All right, people. Thank you.